There you go. <laughs> and we are live. We We're are live. live. <laughs> okay, take it away. Through the beauty of technology, my name is David Sanchez. I own uh, 10 Management, and this is our fabulous Christopher Mars. Hello, my name is Christopher Mars. I am a model at 10 Management, as well as a photographer. And why today is so special, because we love Pattern Magazine so much, but we wanted to dive and take a moment to dive into the physical story that uh, Pattern Magazine and 10 Management uh, created for this current issue, the Rebel issue, uh, and we're seeing it for the first time ever. So we're, we're equally surprised uh, with you, the viewers. So if you want to show us, please. I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm really excited. See, now, now I feel all this pressure, right? What if you hate it? <laughs> no. No. That's not possible. Okay. So where's this? Wait, can you see it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, look at Thank that. Thank you for featuring me. I'm, oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. A couple of things about this story. When you asked me about being featured, yeah. uh, I immediately thought of a dear friend of mine and fashion historian slash icon, Nina Ivan, to pen the story. So um, I'm very excited to read her words as I have not read them. And I, I love her. So this is a huge uh, deal that she's written for the issue. So yeah. thank you, Nina. It's awesome. I mean, like, I, I think that it's a pretty quick story. It's a teaser, almost like to for people to get a taste of who you are and what you do so that they can I love it. discover more about you. But uh, I'd love for you to talk about the agency and like your whole approach and philosophy and how you um, are kind of turning the model on its head a little bit and you're ahead of you're ahead of the time. Exactly. Yeah. Well, about I appreciate that. you. I appreciate you for asking the question and at least seeing that within the agency because as a 22 year industry veteran, I started out modeling when I was 18, so I'm 40. You know, thank you. Oh my God! Um, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I but, um, I when I was 40. What? Ah. <laughs> well, this is why uh, the benefit of being 22 years in the industry, you know how to take care of yourself. But um, uh, so. But really, my experiences of have been uh, having been a model and living in New York and traveling all over the world, uh, and then then being a talent agent for the last twelve years, I've really seen been able to see all sides of the story. And once this happened, I, my company is about six years, uh, six and a half years old, and I started it because I had been working at other agencies and just not really feeling connected to the why. Um, didn't really understand. The, the, the one, how people were treated both internally and externally. And I knew what I wanted as a model and I really wasn't seeing it in the marketplace. So when we think about entrepreneurship, we're really trying to solve a problem. But once I sort of realized doing the work, oh my goodness, we don't need more modeling agencies. So I really had to do a lot of soul searching within my own company as I grew it. And that happened for me about year three, year two, three, four. And it was partly because I was, a, thankfully, uh, a graduate of this Emerging Leaders Program, which is a, a national program put on by the Small Business Association, which I'm so thankful for right now in these crazy corona times, mm -hmm. uh, providing so much incredible relief to small businesses like mine. But I was part of this eight-month incubator uh, where they selected 20 Chicagoland companies, and it was like a street MBA. Uh, so you were in class. So I, I teach entrepreneurship on the side. I run my company, and I was in class, too. So I learned really all these systems on how to grow my company in a way that I never really knew. I didn't go to business school. I, I, have, a I have a political science degree. So my, my application to the why... I really had to start to uncover why I was why my work was important. And through that work, I found I personally really care about growing economic pathways in the creative arts. And that's really important for me to help grow and sustain people's perspective and livelihoods in the arts. And so for me, we get to do that on a macro scale at the agency, which is about 300 talent, and we're growing their careers either nationally, globally, et cetera. So the most important perspective uh, that helped me get there was deciding, and this was a very just difficult decision, about three years ago I decided to give any paradigm that is presented to me in the industry uh, and throw it away. I don't care about size, ethnicity, height, gender, sexuality, ability, anything that unfortunately is limiting in this industry and, and, and in certain markets those constraints still exist. I just felt like for me as a queer man, a queer Latino, I didn't want to 
put those boundaries on other people because I didn't want those on myself. And so once I, I found that space, it separated me from my competitors and it really created space for the marketplace like Chris, and I'm so happy we're in each other's lives to exist because he's already existing and creating. And so I wanted, I thought, uh, and putting, and actually this story really, uh, as we journal, as we explore the story within Pattern Magazine, I think is a perfect example of what we see in the marketplace now. And we were able to put together creative individuals with Chris at the helm, shooting it, creative directing it, and really producing it with um, the 10 management team with diversity. So we have different individuals, skin colors, abilities, sexualities, genders, all in a raw space. And that's what I believe is, is at least creating success in my agency. Sure. And I'm happy to share that story. So if you go to the agency's website at 10mgmt.com, hopefully you see that diversity. So clients come to us versus many other agencies because they can find any shape, size, uh, color, whatever it may be. And I think that's really important because we don't put traditional paradigms on people anymore. So we want everybody. Sure. And because clients want that now. Sure. How did you and Chris meet? Talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear that story. We you met, can jump in. Uh, I don't even remember how many years ago it was. It was quite a few, it was like three or four years ago, I believe you met. I had just started like getting into my photographic career in fashion because I originally started as a fine art photographer. I was doing lots of very conceptual artwork and photographing it that way. And I knew that I'd, I was always drawn to just the fashion industry because it was just seemed like an industry that was much more accepting of people who are unconventional, who don't look the societal norm in that sense. And I kind of just was really drawn to it. So I had started testing as a photographer and like traveling and not traveling, just like reaching out to different agencies and David, responded <laughs> and we met in person he's known yeah. for like quite some time and he's known me through all of my like different phases because I'm someone who my emotions reflect my appearance pretty much so I am somewhat of a chameleon and changing how I look and going through different hairstyles different colors all of it mm -hmm. and he kind of was sort of seeing me and guiding me through that and <clears throat> So we kind of met back then while I was a photographer, and then it wasn't until recently, two years ago, when I again had recently switched up my look to blonde hair and blonde eyebrows. <laughs> so well, I, I remember the day so significantly because I remember sitting at my desk and I have staff, so I think you were in a meeting, and I just remember sort of looking over, and we, we as agents, we sort of have internal communication systems where we might do an eye, you know, we might talk internally. <laughs> and I remember we all sort of looked at each other and goes, you know, and I remember looking at Chris going, you look so amazing right now. And, and, and for the viewers, I think it's important to note, Chris doesn't fit normal, I sort of use air quotes, normal modeling paradigms. He's 5'8", yeah. uh, you know, he has piercings, tattoos, different skin tone, you know, th these things aren't typically uh, seen on a main's men board. Uh, and so we sort of looked at him and got, went, hmm, this is really interesting. And I remember the conversation so clearly being like, hey, let's explore this idea of you being a model. And what? this idea of, uh, I don't think we were using the term then, but this multi-hyphenated, where someone is more than just one thing is really, is very captivating in this market now. Clients want a lot of layers. Okay. And so I remember the conversation with you where I said, let's give this a try. And and you're not going to be right for a lot of things, like a, in a traditional s space. But you, when you get booked, you're going to get booked. And I remember, I think right away, you got booked on like a Timberland shoe campaign that was a couple thousand dollars. And that was a perfect example of something that was showing us the client was wanting this extra layer. And that was really exciting because I, and I know as an agent what that's like to provide something to a client. So how was that like to you? Uh, as a model now as this new new model how was that like to you when you started booking work it was pretty eye-opening to me because I'm someone who in a sense I never really felt that I could be a model just because of I don't fit the standards in the agency I'm five seven five eight like you said I have all the piercings so I didn't really I've never really seen someone who looked like me booking 
commercials or campaigns or editorial stories like that before. So just see. Yeah, let's see it. Okay. <laughs> we haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, so what just see it. That We're all eyes glued to the, the screen. <laughs> ah, but that looks amazing. A couple of things about the story. We felt it was really important to be as raw as possible. So Chris, while he was a, was a model, he actually would set up the shot with his boyfriend who helped co- Co- uh, co-photograph it mm-hmm. and they would take turns being the the subject and the mm-hmm. photographer so yeah. we would set up the shots and um we wanted him to be in it but i felt so strongly about this arching voice of chris leading that charge and being that con- that conduit between you know so there, there really wasn't space between the subject and the the lens it was really one and i felt that was really important for the magazine because how do we bring the image alive, even when it's sort of a raw image? And I thought that that space was really fun to explore in the story. That's definitely. Uh, so you were talking about clientele. I mean, are you are you staying really busy with with gigs yeah. and things like that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, of course, with the times, things like go up and down depending on what's going on. But yeah, I actually have been consistently booking things for the agency which is very exciting and also very eye-opening because it's letting us know that the client is wanting these more people who are unconventional looking and that are just different and exploring themselves and just being very authentic with who they are so I feel like that's something that's very very important and new for the industry and just to keep it pushing and to make it known that there are other individuals and artists that can just that can be seen that may not fit the standard industry and what it's looking for yeah it's interesting actually you you bring up a a good point and one that i don't know what the answer is but maybe you guys have ideas that in a way the fashion industry is uh in some ways much more accepting of people who are different and yet Mm -hmm. ways yeah very much stuck on like a particular look if you the hard thing and i love that you asked that question because as agents we really battle with um the client will always put you in a box and so when there are no boundaries in someone's life either it be gender or gender fluidity or sexuality or whatever it may be they're not meant to be put in a box and when i say a box they're they're categories in which talents are booked within so it could be i need a talent that's caucasian 30 to 35 with brown hair and green eyes that has this shape of waist and you know they're very specific about their wants and so that's something that as agents when someone is sort of anything and nothing it's really hard to put them in a box and we really struggle as an agency with the word and i don't want to use the word struggle but we have a lot of dialogues internally about gender because if we are going to the website for, if you go to our website, just like any modeling website, you're going to see uh, divisions based off uh, traditional pronouns, man and female. And what happens if somebody doesn't identify with that? And by putting them in sort of an, an other category, are we giving them light that they're an other? And so that's something I really, I, I, I look to the community and others to help guide guide me on that because even as a queer man I don't have all the answers around those those areas because at the end of the day the client will still put you in a box and you have to present the person to the client in that box and so that's the hardest point if you don't present them in that box they don't understand it so there's this weird sort of yeah I could see fluidity that. around um just this idea of putting people in a box. I really, I've seen the industry move away from it, but then in larger markets, LA, New York, uh, European markets, Asian markets, they're very specifically geared towards uh, traditional paradigms and sizes. And so, to me, right? it is. It would be more ahead of the times, if you will, understanding that there's, that that traditional divide is not really there anymore. I feel like they are, they are in some points. Like there are agencies and clients that do and are thinking outside of the box and want that different look, but then there are also those same agencies that still want the traditional and what's been happening in the industry for years. I think the thing that's coming, and I think Chris really, and I'm not here to sort of uh, give you a pat on the back, Chris, but I, I, I admire you so much because you really, to me, represent the idea what I feel 
agencies and clients want now, which is a strong personal story, a strong sense of self. And that's all we need. Mm -hmm. And the rest can be filled in the blanks with gorgeous imagery, a beautiful portfolio, the story, uh, a media kit, your social media, all those factors come into play, but you are showing up and being your most authentic self first. And I think that's that's what I really look for at my company is if somebody walks in the door, I need to know that self. I need to know that internally quickly, just as much as you need that from me uh, as quick in our meeting too. So clients make their decisions on half of a second if they like you or not. And so they, they somehow, how are we communicating that, that self, sense of self through imagery, branding, um, social media. And I think I love Chris and I would encourage all the viewers to really Take a look and engage Chris on his social media, um, on his platforms, both of his work and, and himself, because we've been able to then translate that into social media bookings where he's being booked for his social media to a print model to, you know, it's, it gives us that flexibility in the marketplace. And to me, that's the most fun. I, that, that brings me the most joy as an agent in, in working with clients um, that have that strong sense of self. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. Chris, do you uh, do you like being in front of the camera or behind Ooh. the camera? See me, I'm a oh. photographer. I hate, hate being in front of the lens. Really? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. This has been like a, a huge journey for me, not gonna lie. I feel like in the beginning when I was strictly just doing photography, I was very much about just being behind the camera and I didn't want to be in front of it at all. Okay. I would only get in front of it if I wanted to tell a personal story or do like a self-portrait. Um, but since becoming a model and being in front of the camera more, it's definitely swayed and shifted my viewpoint. Um, just in the, enjoying the fact that it's given, it's given me another sense of creativity and how to, another output and sure. outlet to be able to just explore identity and vulnerability and allowing the viewer to see that it's okay to be authentic and true to who you are. It's okay to go through ups, it's okay to go through downs and just really truly embrace who you are as a whole. So I, that's what I try to do most and strive to do when I'm in front of the camera is just give that viewer the reassurance that it's okay to be different and it's okay to just feel like you're, you're not alone, that there's somewhere, someone out here in the world for you there's the job for you, there's anything for you. You just have to set your mind to it pretty much. So question for you, Chris, when you engage your social media, what, what type of post do you find uh, or message that you find your audience uh, connects to and who would you define your audience to be? Uh, what message does my audience connect to? Um, I mean, going back to like what I said, pretty much my message when I post is that it's just okay and be true to who you are. Be true to what you believe in, what you, what you represent. Um, be true to your artistry, just anything. Don't let standards or other opinions have input on your life. And let will you raise up the rebel issue? Because that to me <laughs> sounds like the, uh, Paulina, will you hold up the rebel issue? Because that sounds like the, the, the whole theme of the rebel issue. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's... That was kind you, of the point. <laughs> why would you call that a rebel? Why did you decide on that term, the rebel? Well, you know, so, okay. This is, that's a great question because we called it the art of rebellion. Okay, thank you. So, so we kind of dialed it down a little bit and to say that this is not, it's like the gentle rebellion, right? We're not trying to upend the world and like create anarchy. It's more about thinking outside the box, right? It's mm -hmm. creating outside of the standards that have been set I for love that. hundreds of years. So that there's a different way to live life, to think about life and existence and identity and who you want to be. And that's, there's an art to it. Like there's nothing I wrong. I like that. Yeah. So it wasn't, we didn't necessarily want to be like, we wanted to talk about rebellion as it pertains to creativity and creation, not destruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we're talking about here completely ties in with that. And to think about our story, um, it, as the viewers look through the story, I found what was interesting is the outsider uh, being on set during the shoot 
was trying to get the models to not be models and to flow as themselves. And I think that kind of even correlates to the idea of being rebellious because I, my experience as a talent agent is once as a model starts to think of themselves as a model, they become almost another person. And so I think when we actually need to take a step away from that and exactly not are. try to pretend or, you know, the movement, the whole, a lot of times what happens with the model when they start trying to art is they start to get really rigid in the face or really rigid in their body and they're overthinking it. So I found a lot of the work we were doing on set was just to create that space where they, they didn't have to be models. They just were themselves moving with other people. Other people. Yep. Um, so I don't know if you experienced that as the photographer and the subject, Chris, um, then how do you feel about that? I mean, I would definitely agree. I feel in my experience, it's helped knowing both sides because I have a better understanding of what is trying to be portrayed in the story that's being told. But I, ha I myself have had many times where I've had to either coach a model or get a model more comfortable to where they're not feeling that they have to put on this persona or this image of what they think they need to look like and really just go back to just being who they are and align themselves to realize that you're already pretty, you already have this beautiful persona about you, this beautiful entity, and all you need to do is just act within that and let your personality and everything shine through. Because that's what I look for as a photographer. I love that. And something that comes up for me around that is, my experience as a model was, a, as a working professional model, was for a very extended period of time, but it was last decade. And as a gay person, you weren't really out. So I had gay agents tell me, don't be gay when you go to jobs. Like, so that still is, is a hard pill to swallow. Whereas I feel like now in this marketplace, people aren't hiding. And I, don't, I wasn't hiding. So I, I don't want to say, oh, I was in the closet. I've never been in the closet. So, uh, but I, it, was, it was very strange to be on sets where I, I, I wasn't manipulating my behavior. I just wasn't being as open, perhaps, as I always would be just to get the job. And so I think now we don't, I don't think clients are, are putting that pressure. They, if anything, they want more visibility on all, on all aspects of, of, of the word diversity. So I think Chris is, I don't want to project your experience, but you have such a different experience and openness in the ecosystem than I did. And that was only 10 to 15 years ago. Yeah. So it is exciting to see that in the marketplace now where there isn't so much focus about being in the closet in the arts. Sure. There's much more growth in the industry and just in different jobs and what clients are looking for. And I think it's really beautiful just to see that type of change, even though it has been 10, 15 years, and just think about where we'll be coming up in the next amount of years that pass. Um, as long as agencies and jobs and clients are still true and looking for that true authentic person i expect nothing but the best for the yeah, future absolutely. i love that i i have i have a couple of fun questions well one fun question for you so when so go back to when you were kids because you know it all starts back there <laughs> how <laughs> how did you discover your creativity like, you know, there's people who take the more traditional corporate route, and then there's people who, like, are artists from the outset. Was that the experience for both of you? Or, David, did you do the corporate thing and then decide that you were going to be a hotshot model? Or, like, what, how? And also, I want to know about Chris's, like, other <laughs> phases. Like, did you have blue hair? Other did you, what did you, oh, yeah. what was? <laughs> I had all of it. Uh, for me, my experience, I, from much what I can remember, I've pretty much been a creative my entire life. Uh, whether it was drawing and just sketching or coming up with different stories in my head, I was always in my own world and just projecting that onto whatever I had around me, whether it was playing with action figures or Barbie dolls, anything. I was just in that creative mindset and just creating these different worlds and aspects and just beings of different people that pretty much stayed with me my entire life so i never really i've always had this feeling where i could never really do that corporate america job because it just wasn't for me it didn't feel right it didn't feel natural and anything that i put effort into or work that i do i want to feel that freedom just to be open and just to be whoever i am and 
I feel like if that's not possible, then it's not worth putting energy into. So. I got that feedback from my brother um, about a, a few years ago, because I think a lot of people as a, as a, I get a lot of people as a projecting onto me like, oh, it must be so great working for yourself, even in a creative industry. Uh, you get to be so creative and how cool you get to work for yourself. And that that is true, but it is very stressful running a company. Um, and I think that paradigm is different. And I love what Chris just said. Like, I don't, I agree. Like, I don't see myself in a nine to five job wearing a suit. And that doesn't mean it's not equally as important. Uh, that's just not right for me. So I took the steps to in my life so I could have the flexibility to work for myself and create that environment. It's not to say it's not without stress and standards. It, it, it is, and but you learn to live with it. Um, I did work, uh, every job I've ever had has been a, an agent in some capacity. So I've always managed both parties. And so um, my first job out of college was a real estate broker for a private real estate developer in Portland. And I sold his properties for many years. Uh, and and I, in retrospect, was very honored to be there. And he's still my mentor. And he's a, he's a very successful gay uh, real estate developer in Portland. And I was able to really learn from him. So I, I, I feel like I was in the best business school at that point. Because, uh, and then I, then I switched to be a model. Um, so I think at that point, you know, being an agent representing all parties, I've always done that. So that's very natural for me. Oh, wait, hang on. Talk about how you got scouted. How did that happen? Well, there was, I look at my, well, it's fun to, to reflect on these because the first time I was scouted, I was in college in Oregon in a little local mall and I was working at Abercrombie. I think I was 18 and a scout from, he rep, his name is Darren Dyke. He represents, or he owns Muse Models Portland now. Uh, he used to be affiliated with Mode Models, which is out of Canada. So that was my first agency in Portland in college. So I was working a lot in Portland at the time. And then my first um, trip to Chicago was in 2004 to see Madonna concert. And I was stopped on the street by an elite models intern, of all things, uh, and just in front of H&M on Michigan Avenue. And I went into the office, which was on Huron and right off of Michigan Avenue and I got a contract that day and I thought it was so cool and I was I think I was 24 and I went back home to Oregon and pretty much said fuck you everybody I'm out of here and packed up my bags and moved to Chicago and I didn't know anybody I didn't even work for a year um, and that's how hard it is to to sort of get your portfolio going and after uh, the weird thing is is I the guy his name is Joe Barley he works at Wilhelmina LA right now but he gave me the contract and then I took over his job when he left the company four or five years later um, after, you know, living all over. So it's just, I think that's a great example. Like you never know where you're going to be um, and who you're going to replace sure. or who's going to replace you. <laughs> They're real. I love that you know all these agents' names still. That's pretty impressive. I, I can. Well, they're still in the business, and you know, you still work with them. That's what's fun about it. You know, so uh, that was. I still remember the exact spot on Michigan Avenue in front of the H and M where I was scouted. That's great. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Chris, what are you? What are your projects that you're working on right now? I know things are slow with COVID, but. What do you got cooking? What's next? Cooking. What's next for me is really. Honing in on my photography, that's one major thing that I'm doing. So I've been focusing on doing a lot more conceptualized photo shoots and sessions, more so self-portraits at the moment since we're quarantined to the stay-at-home order. So I've just been doing my best to stay creative within the house. Um, and then modeling-wise, it's just really building up my brand as a model so I can start reaching out to bigger and better clients. Very cool. Yeah, what about thank you. you? <laughs> What are you working on? Anything exciting on the horizon? Are you writing books? Uh, you know, collecting Nobel prizes, you know? I know, I'm just, you know what? I'm just recentering myself right now and using this opportunity to enjoy my life as much as you can in this quarantine. And, you know, obviously keeping the company moving forward. I think that's my biggest focus right now. Sure. Okay. Well, it's great to chat with you guys. I, um, thank you for having us. Yeah. The magazine's on its way. I was, I probably should have done like a screen share, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, let's see the rest of it. See viewers, we still haven't even seen it yet. No, well, hang on. Let me see if I can. I give us a nice preview. 
Hang on a second. Wait for it. I got to pull it up if I can find it. Because I think it'll look better if I can actually screen share with you guys. Bear with me. Uh, could have probably lined all this up better, but but no, I had to improvise. Hmm. Let's see. Now I can't find it. Don't worry about it. I'll get it in the mail. No, no. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Give it a second. It's downloading. <laughs> <laughs> Any second now. What are you working on? What's your focus? Yeah, what, that's a great question. Uh, we're getting ready to bring on our next class of interns. We have 10 interns this summer uh, that are going to, in theory, start in a couple of weeks. Um, we're just waiting to hear what happens with, you know, our situation. So um, we're just trying to get organized because, you know, to manage 10 people at the same time and make sure that they have a meaningful experience is... Uh, yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. And so that, and then just starting to think about the next. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, next you. Hang on. So we waited. So we've got a few models uh, John Becker, Maya, Angelique, Chris Mars, and then one, and then hair and makeup is done by Paula Hackensack, who's on our board at the agency. And then one other model, Priya. They're gorgeous Priya. Oh, I love that. Ooh, gorgeous. So we included everybody's little blurb. And uh, here's everybody. Oh, love that. Wonderful. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Ah. Everybody looks so good. Yay. Wow. And Eric Lucian. Yes. There you go. I think, yeah, I think that's it. And we really chose models that were unique on their own. And that was very exciting to see kind of their, their, each of their stories come to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Through the story. Mm -hmm. Called it Divergent. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's very original. <laughs> well, thank you for including us today on this great conversation. I hope your viewers uh, have learned something. Oh, absolutely. Share your, uh, share your socials. Uh, so ATP is at 10 MGMT. Okay. And what about you? All right. My model Instagram account is at Mars the Martian. That's Mars with two R's. And then my photography account is at Christopher Mars with two R's. You can follow both. Awesome. Well, well, thank you so much, gang. Yeah, great to chat with yeah. you guys. Really appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, talk soon. Have a great day. Thanks, you too.